Let's go over how to read a circles plot. The basic vocabulary is that a circles plot contains tracks, and if I hover over them here, you can see each track. So these are concentric circles, and there'll often be a track in the middle that contains some connections and things like that. Um, the other major vocabulary word you want to know is sector, which in a human genome like this is going to just be the same as the chromosomes. So sector is for chromosome one, chromosome two, chromosome three, etc. Let's highlight one of these in white so you can see like the sector contains data in potentially all of the tracks and it can also have connections to other sectors. So here we've highlighted chromosome four in white. Sectors can also be other things than chromosomes. They're almost always going to be some kind of genomic sequence, though, or transcriptomic sequence, perhaps. Um, it'll usually be something you can measure in base pairs. So this could be gene sequences, it could be transcripts, it could be multiple bacterial genomes where you're comparing them against each other and you don't have to only fit one genome in here you could fit multiple line them up and mirror them and show syntony so this is another common type of plot uh, within circles plotting world and basically in circa, we just call these chromosomes, but it can be any sequences. And so that's what a sector is, like the one shown in white here. And in order to read the data itself, what we will generally see, a scatter plot is probably the easiest one to visualize here. The type of data that we're looking at here is you're always going to have a chromosome name and some kind of position that is for every single data point. So when it's just a point, you have one chromosome and one position, and that just tells the algorithms for plotting where that data point is located. And then you're also going to have, for a scatter plot like this, you'll have a Y position. And this is a number in this case that will tell you if the number is lower, it's going to be closer to the center of the circle, like over here. And if the number is higher, it'll be farther away from the center of the circle. So basically think of far away as being the same as up on a normal y-axis on a normal type of plot that you're going to make anywhere else. Um, but because this is a radial coordinate system, it just looks a little different, but I think it's pretty easy to wrap your head around nonetheless. One of the amazing things we can do with a circles plot that we can't do with other types of plots is to show these connections between chromosomes. And this is really powerful. If I actually open the data mapper for this one, you can see that these are ribbons that have a chromosome one, start one, end one. So that defines one side which could, for instance, be on chromosome four here in white. And then it could connect over to chromosome seven, which you would see as chromosome two over here with its own start and end positions. And so you're basically going to be drawing connections. So if you think about it, it makes sense that you would need to have two different chromosome position pairs in order to actually uh, draw the connection between two different chromosomes, while some other data types, like our scatter plot we showed before, is only going to contain one chromosome position point. And then you have things like a bar chart, where you have a chromosome, and then there's a start and an end, like you're drawing a bin for a bar chart, and it also has a height, which is the Y here. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. This was a little tutorial on how to read a circles plot. If you want to try out Circa, which is the software I'm showing here, you can find it at circa.omgenomics.com. All right, thank you.